Here we are again for question B2 of the 2018 SDM lab assessment. So, consider the following description of a business process, blah blah blah. In Papyrus, develop an activity diagram to model this process. Do not concern yourself with object flow, do not include swim lanes. Wherever the order of activities is not clear in the description, show them happening in parallel. Export your project as B2, as described above. Submit b2.zip. OK, so we need a project B2 with an activity diagram, and then we'll come back and see what to put in it. So we're going to need a new papyrus project, which is going to be called B2. And we're going to need just an activity diagram. Good. So here's our activity diagram. What's supposed to go in it? Let's look now. So Electra sets an exam and then uploads it to secure storage. Now we're not showing swim lanes, so we're not really concerned about who does it. We're just going to be concerned that an exam should be set and then uploaded to secure storage. Then it must be sent to an external exam of comments and also inspected by someone in the school. So I think that's a case where it's not clear what order those things should happen in, being sent to an external exam of comments and inspected by someone in the school. When both of these things have happened, uh -huh, the lecturer revises the paper. Right, so let's see, we're going to go. Uh, where are we? We are going to want. Where is our bog standard opaque action? There it is. Uh, so uh, I'll probably want a start state, but let's worry about that later. Okay, so I'm going to say set exam. say upload to secure storage and then we were going to send to external comments and we were also going to get somebody in the school to comment right get comments on someone ah. And then after both of those things have happened, the lecturer is supposed to revise the paper. OK, so we're nearly there, but what we've not got yet is any kind of starting and finishing and parallelism and transitions. A mere nothing. OK, let's start off by putting in our initial node, because that's the very first thing that's going to happen. We don't want to give it a name, we never do. Uh, and let's put some control flow in. So we're going to go control from the start to the set exam, and from the set exam to uh, I have to cut to the end of the, from the set exam to the upload to secure storage. So those things are ordered as in the description. It's not very beautiful, but there are no marks for beautifulness, um, and I don't really care. So now we're going to next we need to do to do a fork so that we can do both of those things in parallel. And after we've done both of them in parallel, we're going to need a join. So let's have a fork, and we don't need to give it a name, and let's also have a join that's going to come down here. And Oops, and actually it doesn't need a name either. I don't like having names for things that don't need names. The reason why you always get this stuff is because in, a U in UML every model element can have a name but very often it's conventional not to actually give them names. So now control flow from upload to secure storage to the fork and then from the fork to each of these things and then from each of these things to the join. Ah, stop it. Hard to click when you're videoing, and there's a limit to how many times I want to say I did that wrong. I'm going to start again. Uh, but I think you can see that the total time of the videos is considerably less than the time you had in the assessment, which hopefully reassures you that it's kind of reasonable. Uh, now, the only thing we haven't got so far is the question of well, what's going to happen after the revised paper. I think the sensible thing to do really is to say that that is. Uh, that that's the end of the whole activity since it was supposed to be a complete business process that we had here. So I think we'll give uh, an activity final at that point. 
and we'll have a control flow from there to there. Now that's looking pretty good, assuming we don't care that it's kind of ugly layout. Let's just have a quick check of the paper and make sure we've got it all. Lecturer sets an exam, upload it to secure storage, then it must be sent to an external examiner for comments and also inspected by someone in the school. When both of these things have happened, the lecturer revises the paper. Now, have we got all that? Um, yeah, maybe I might modify the text there just to match better. Um, it's not really too crucial, but sometimes it's helpful to use the same terminology that your customers used. So we'll do that just for good practice sake. There you go. That's th that is the end of that.